Look, I thought that was very generous of our production team to go with um, the Chancellor of the Exchequer's speech from the Mansion House last night, because actually the big news from the Mansion House was quite apart from those warnings uh, from Mr Hammond, was the fact that Mark Field, who is a minister in the Foreign Office, incidentally, who comes under uh, Jeremy Hunt, actually grappled with a Greenpeace protester, and that is all over the, uh, the headlines of certainly the tabloids and elsewhere this morning, and whether he's going to face some form of inquiry into that, whether the the City of London Police were, are going to get involved in this one as well. Uh, he was accused, alleged to have manhandled uh, the Greenpeace protester who tried to uh, disrupt uh, the Mansion House speeches last night as well. So straight away, problems for Jeremy Hunt on day one. The other thing I thought was our reading was very interesting about Mr Hunt edging out Michael Gove because we talked a lot about this psycho drama that could happen uh, if indeed Mr Gove were to be in the final two and go up against his old nemesis Boris Johnson. Of course, those two have a lot of form from 2016 when Mr Gove at the last moment switched his allegiance to himself uh, rather than Boris Johnson uh, in the bid to become uh, the leader of the Conservative Party that time round as well. So the fact that uh, there are accusations of vote lending from Mr Johnson's supporters, i.e. edging out Mr Gove on purpose to, to mean that Mr Johnson faces um, Jeremy Hunt, who was a Remainer in 2016 in the final two, uh, again, lots of accusations. So typical Tory party, I'm afraid, in many ways, skullduggery and concerns about all kinds of issues that aren't about the main issues, which is, i.e., who is going to be the next Conservative Party leader, who is going to be the next Prime Minister. Quick word on the process. It starts tomorrow in Birmingham. It ends on the 17th of July in London. 16 hustings, at which basically means that the candidates get to go up in front of various Conservative Party uh, membership groups. There's 160,000 uh, Conservative Party members. And thereafter, uh, with the ballots in place, from the 6th to the 8th of July, these members will then vote uh, for their favourite to become the leader of the Conservative Party. We'll understand that those results will be available from the 22nd of July, just in time for the parliamentary recess, incidentally, so for the MPs to go off on holiday as well. But then, of course, the, the tough work begins for the new Prime Minister to try and get, A, the Conservative Party on board, and B, cobble together some form of deal uh, which will work for the Europeans. Incidentally, people are saying, don't expect too much much out of the new Prime Minister, even when we get one, about what his plan is, uh, because um, we've got the Conservative Party conference at the end of September, and it's very unlikely they're going to reveal full details. Indeed, from what we've been hearing from Willem, that Europe will be ready to receive full details uh, of what the plan is going forward to try and get out of this quagmire that is Brexit. Steve, I want to get into the market implications and the one where we have seen the most trading around has really been sterling, less so other assets. We've been right up to almost 133 this year and right down to even 125 this week on the chance of a hard Brexit. Some of that now masked over by the, the prospect that the Bank of England could still be hiking at some point in the, in the near future. What's the potential for, for big swings now? Because uh, if it is Boris Johnson, surely the, the prospect becomes live that there could be a hard Brexit come the end of October if there's no deal. Yeah. Yeah, you make some very good points there, Karen. Well, for a start, on what planet could Mark Carney be raising rates when the rest of the world is looking more dovish? I, I don't know, especially when the UK inflation data, uh, UK retail sales data and UK confidence data are all pointing in one direction at the moment, albeit just only three uh, pieces of data sampling. So the rate hike issue aside, uh, October 31st comes into radar. Now, the difference between the two candidates is that Jeremy Hunt said if we're close to a deal, they would, he would not force a hard Brexit on the 31st of October. Uh, and the insinuation from the other side is from the Brexiteer, Mr Johnson, is that he would take us out with or without a deal on the 31st of October. But actually, is that the case? And I think people are beginning to look at his language when he's gone from we must come out on October the 31st to more recent language where he said, and I quote Mr Johnson, it is eminently feasible that we will go out with or without a deal on October 31st as well. So very interesting to see how that language may well change uh, in these huge number of hustings. I should say there's a, an ITV TV debate coming up quite soon as well. So there'll be lots of uh, opportunities uh, for people to take Mr Johnson on about that hard Brexit scenario, which, as you say, Karen, has taken... Sterling at one point down to a 125 handle. And Steve, um, what do you think the odds are for a general election at this stage? What else are you hearing about that? Well, I mean, 
I think that that's a very important point as well. But but first of all, the odds on who's going to win. I mean, look, we can just say that the William Hill, for one, bookmakers, seven to one, that it's going to be Boris Johnson who will be the next Prime Minister. Jeremy Hunt is very much the rank outsider here as well. Uh, people have talked a lot about him relying on his competence to get deals done uh, and the fact that he has had a very good track record of getting records done, despite the fact, that, of course, uh, whilst he was Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt had a huge, huge rancorous and very bitter row with the junior doctors as well. And a lot of people in the NHS uh, say that they're scarred by that and would never vote Conservative again. That said, he did secure a lot of money for the NHS at a time, of course, uh, of austerity and belt tightening in the Conservative Party as well. But moving on to your question, Jeff, as well, uh, it depends on getting a mandate as well. Uh, you and I and Karen have all seen some of these polls and there have been big question marks about the Comres poll that came out of the Telegraph quite recently talking about the Tories under Boris Johnson could win in a general election uh, and get a 140 seat majority. That is a real outlier of a poll, it's got to be said, because in many other polls, the Conservatives are neck and neck. But again, the Conservatives are asking themselves lots of questions. One, who should be their next leader? Two, who is uh, going to get the, the best scenario for the country on Brexit? And three, uh, which one would win a general election? And for many MPs and Conservative Party members, is it the Brexit scenario or winning an election which is the most important? That is a, a very interesting question because they don't necessarily have the same result. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.